Hello everyone, I am Dr. Mahal Khalili, recently graduated from Sultan Qaboos University in Oman, still working with my PhD supervisor, Professor Shafur Rahman, and my co-supervisor, Dr. Nasr Al-Habsi, from the Department of Food Science and Nutrition in researches related to date seeds fiber. I am glad that I reached the second stage of the third can scientific competition. My participation is one of my publications from my PhD thesis, which was as the a research paper with the title of Application of Dynamic Temperature Humidity Chamber for measuring moisture sorption isotherms of biomaterials as compared to the conventional isopistic method under the field of agriculture and food industries, and the relevant challenge is agricultural and food science and technology. The inspiration for this work was the desire to measure sorption isotherms of the fibers extracted from date pits by using dynamic temperature humidity chamber. Therefore, the idea was to create a standard method compared to the isopistic method to measure the sorption isotherms of commercial biomaterials as they are high in homogeneity and purity. Before we go further, we need to understand what is sorption isotherm. In simple words, it is the relationship between the material's moisture content and water activity of the atmosphere at a certain temperature, and it is correlated to food in many ways, such as determining the end point of food drying, food storage stability, and packaging design. The static isopistic method was first invented in 1917 by a scientist called Bosfield. In this experiment, a well-contained environment that contains higher and lower vapor pressure solutions is created, so solvent travels from higher vapor pressure solution to the lower one, thus samples will be subjected to specific humidity condition. Over the years, a wide range of isopistic setups with improved designs were reported, however, they were either complicated in setup or high in cost. The conventional isopistic method typically requires the use of desiccators, saturated salts, thiamol, an oven or a hot bath. The new method, on the other hand, was performed with, this, with the use of temperature humidity chamber alone. In the case of the isopistic method, seven saturated salt solutions were used to create a relative humidity at the range between 11.5 and 95% in separated desiccators. The biomaterial samples used in this work were the commercial cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulase. Thymol was used to avoid any microbial growth in the samples or the prepared solution. Desiccators containing samples, saturated salt solutions, and thymol were kept in the oven at 30 degrees Celsius. The mass of the sample in each desiccator was recorded every two days until a constant weight was, ach was achieved. In the case of the developed method, the DTH chamber was set at 30 degrees Celsius and 5% relative humidity. Biomaterial samples were placed in the chamber in triplicates. Sample weight was recorded after 30 minutes, and same procedure was followed at 10% increment up to 90% relative humidity. Isotherms in both methods were modeled by the commonly used fundamentals BET and GAP equations. The correlation between the two methods was found more than 90% for all samples. In addition, the new method showed high reproducibility compared to the conventional one. The DTH chamber method showed several advantages over the conventional isopistic method, mainly shorter equilibrium time, which was just 30 minutes compared to more than three weeks duration in case of the isopistic method, primarily due to the mechanical air circulation of the DTH chamber, which accelerates the mass transfer and the requirement of opening and closing the desiccators to measure the sample mass, which disrupt the equilibrium in the old method. Higher reliability since longer duration in the conventional method could change the physical and chemical properties of the sample, consequently affects the accuracy negatively. While the range of relative humidity and chamber in contrast to the conventional method, which is restricted to the available saturated salts and narrower temperature. Smoother isotherm curve was observed with the new method, unlike the older one, that was because of using one sample for the entire range of the relative humidity in the DTH chamber. The isopistic method used different samples for each relative humidity value. The DTH chamber does not require the use of any saturated salts, so there is no need to regulate the saturated salts condition, neither to worry about the fossilization or contamination that is maybe accompanied with the use of salts. This was a brief background about my topic, which appeared on the screen, and I am pleased as well to report that we were able to recently publish another research paper, which followed the developed method to measure the absorption isotherm of fibers extracted from date pits. 
Thank you for attending my video.